Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode takes us to the Russian Far East. Yes, once again. The rail town of Tinda is known as the capital of Siberia's other great railway, the Baikal-Amur Main Line. It is an important area for transportation of people and goods alike to the remote area. The area around the town is rugged and primitive. The forests here are dense and nearly uninterrupted for miles and miles. The Siberian larch, laurel leaf poplar, and the Scots pine are among the tallest trees here, and kites and kestrels hunt the chi and tufted hair grasses. The world's most dangerous array of predators are here, with Siberian tigers, massive brown bears, wolves, and Amur leopards. In fact, this area is one of the last bastions of survival for the Siberian tiger and the Amur leopard. A few of the common animals here are mountain sheep, antelope, reindeer, and moose. On May 11, 2015, 54-year-old mother of three, Natalia Pasternak, and her 82-year-old friend, Valentina Gorodetskaya, had spent the day gathering birch sap. Natalia was a postal worker presently, but in her previous career had enjoyed being a baker in the town of Tinda. The sap of the birch tree is used to augment recipes, especially drinks. One very profitable use of birch sap is to use it to make birch syrup, sort of like maple syrup. It can be poured over meat or bread to make pancakes or waffles and is considered a delicacy by some people. It is very expensive in the markets, so it was a good way to make money selling it or use it for the ladies' personal consumption. They had gathered what they would consider a good day's haul and had enjoyed their time in their favorite spot to harvest it. They had come here together for years, since Natalia's adult kids were little. They had always had a peaceful time surrounded by nature, and today was no different, but their lives were about to change forever. As the women prepared their things for departure, Natalia called her daughter Ekaterina on her cell phone. She told her that they were all done and would soon be on their way back home. Suddenly, Natalia's dog, Gerda, sat up and glared a short distance away. She let out an alarmed bark, then another, then a series of long, howling barks. Natalia had never heard Goethe bark like that before and knew it must be something important. When she glanced up from Goethe, her vision was filled with a brown blur streaking toward her. She instinctively knew it was a bear and turned and ran. She had covered about forty yards before realizing she had left Valentina all by herself. Valentina couldn't hear very well and couldn't run, so Natalia turned around and looked back toward her friend. She knew Valentina stood no chance of escaping the bear by herself, especially if she hadn't heard Gerda's barks or otherwise been alerted to the presence of the bear. It might just walk right up behind her and kill her unaware. Natalia glanced over toward the bear. Gerda was keeping it at bay several yards away. The bear was vexed by Gerda and wasn't yet focusing on Natalia nor Valentina. Natalia couldn't help but start yelling for Valentina to warn her about the bear. As she yelled... Gerda thought Natalia wanted her to come to her and began running in her direction. The bear, seeing Gerda running, gave chase, and both of the animals were now heading directly for Natalia. With the bear following Gerda, the two were quickly by Natalia's side. The bear seemed confused on who it should attack, the woman or the dog. Natalia froze in fear, but the bear lunged at her. It bit her first on her legs and began pulling at them, trying to force her to the ground. The only thoughts running through Natalia's mind at this point was that this was how she was going to die. She thought nobody would save them. The bear was tearing at the flesh on her legs and it caused excruciating pain. Natalia knew she would have to fight back or she would be eaten alive. She desperately grabbed the drill and remembered thinking that if she hit the bear it would enrage it. The bear would then surely kill her quickly. She thought a rapid death would be better than burdening her children, who would have to take care of her if she were disabled. The bear then backed off a few feet, then rose to its hind legs for a moment. It then went back to all four legs and charged her, clamping its jaws onto her legs. The force of the impact knocked her onto her back. In desperation, Natalia tried to poke the bear in the eye with the drill, but it quickly bit through her arm, paralyzing it and making it useless. The bear then focused its attack on her neck. Natalia began yelling out for God to help her as the bear bit and clawed her. As the bear mauled her, she remembered she had not been to confession and would die before repenting from her sins. Right then, Valentina showed up with a big stick, and she began beating the bear with her fists and praying along with her friend. The bear ended her pugilistic prayer assault with a quick swat to her back, which sent her toppling to the ground. Valentina recognized that she would not be able to save her friend, and as quickly as she could, she fled to find help for Natalia. 
After swatting Valentina, the bear turned back to Natalia. It bit onto her leg and began dragging her deeper into the forest. As she was dragged along the ground, Natalia desperately grabbed at bushes and branches with her working arm to stop the bear from taking her away. After dragging her a short distance, the bear began to rake up leaves and twigs and paw them over Natalia. She silently wondered to herself if the bear was going to signal other bears to come eat her. As Natalia lay still underneath the dirt and leaves, she noticed it was quiet around her. She wondered if the bear had begun to search for Valentina to kill and bury her too. The bear was walking around and had left Natalia for dead, for food later. Natalia was still conscious and was relieved that the attack had stopped. After a little over an hour, the bear returned to her. It began to lick the congealed blood from her neck. It then began to eat her legs while she was still alive. The pain seared through her body with each mouthful of her flesh the bear chewed from her body. When she reached her working arm over to cover her legs, the bear bit through that arm too. Just after the bear crushed her good arm, she heard rifle shots ring out. The bear disappeared from her view, and she could hear footsteps approaching her. Two hunters had discovered her and had saved her life. Still terrified, Natalia meekly asked if the bear was dead. The hunters responded affirmatively and helped dig her out from the cache. First responders quickly arrived at the scene of Natalia's attack and were surprised to see she was still alive. The injuries she sustained would have killed anyone, but she had never lost consciousness. They loaded her onto a wheeled stretcher and carefully moved her out of the forest and to the hospital. The medical professionals rushed her into the operating room and pulled the sheet covering her body off. She remembers hearing them comment on how she was bitten and clawed all over her entire body. Natalia was shaking from the shock of the attack, but she was alive. The question was, for how long? She recalled that she was covered with blood, leaves, and mud. They immediately administered sedative drugs, and she faded into unconsciousness as her pain disappeared. The surgeons feverishly worked to suture her wounds and stanch her bleeding, stating that her initial prognosis was bleak. Her injuries were extensive and severe. Natalia was missing scalp and neck tissues as well as deep bites and gashes on her groin, arms, and legs. Her ear was damaged as well, but she was determined that she would recover from this attack. Her daughter Ekaterina would wheel her outside to enjoy the sunlight during her visits. Due to the mud in her wounds, Natalia had a flare-up of sepsis, but the doctors immediately treated it with antibiotics. Natalia also fought a septic pneumonia while hospitalized from the sand and dust that had infiltrated her lungs and bronchial tubes during the attack. She continually dealt with recovering the ability to move her arms and had decided to wear a wig if she couldn't afford plastic surgery to repair her scalp. Ekaterina was supposed to go with the other two women to gather the birch sap. Natalia shudders at the thought of her daughter being attacked as well. Ekaterina was enrolled in a program to be an obstetrician and only beginning her adult life at 20 years of age. The hunter who shot the bear, Sergei Ivanov, informed Natalia that the bear was a four-year-old female and only about five feet seven inches in height. The sow weighed about 220 pounds, which is a very low weight for a brown bear. This bear had most likely recently emerged from hibernation and was very hungry. Sergei explained that he was just leaving work when the police called him. They told him that a bear had attacked people, and he grabbed his rifle and hurried to help. Once he and his partner arrived, they found Valentina as she escaped from the attack. She was so shocked she couldn't speak and suffered from minor injuries. The two hunters had walked only about 300 yards when Sergei's partner yelled that he had found a bear. The bear immediately charged the hunters and was quickly dispatched by four shots from Sergei's rifle. He made sure to end its terror with a coup de grace fired to the head of the sow. It had been laying down, guarding Natalia. She was found only six yards from where the bear fell. In prior weeks, bears had been reported encroaching on city boundaries. One bear was shot a week earlier while walking through a residential area. Another bear had been seen digging up corpses in the graveyard. The local area was apparently not able to provide enough food for bears in order for them to go into town like that. There are reportedly 7,000 brown bears in the Amur region. Since 1997, nine people have been killed by bears in the Tinda district alone. Natalia made significant and rapid progress in her recovery, surprising the doctors. They reported that she was able to walk within a few weeks after the attack. She worked on recovering her strength, and her mental recovery will likely continue for the rest of her life.
Natalia commented that the important thing was that she is alive. She said she was grateful to the doctors and hunters for saving her life. As for Goethe, she came out of the fight with the bear unscathed and eagerly waited for Natalia to return home. After reviewing the facts surrounding this episode, I have a few questions for you. Do you think this attack was territorial or predatory? How do you think a firearm would have changed the outcome of this attack? Do you think bear spray would have prevented this attack? Do you think Natalia should have turned around to help Valentina, or should she have kept running to get help? I will enjoy reading your comments, so please post them below and let's talk about it.